What's up guys, I'm Grant Olson. I'm a pro hooper overseas and I've been putting this video off for long enough. I gotta tell you about the most unstoppable move in basketball, the hook shot. I'm gonna cover everything you need to know about Kareem and how he used this move to be the greatest scorer of all time. I've scored just under a thousand points in my basketball career off hook shots alone. So I'm biased, but I think everyone should be using it. Stick around because I'm gonna help you add it to your bag by telling you how I learned it in high school and still use it to take advantage of defenders overseas today. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's name used to be Lou Alcindor before converting to Islam and he was a bucket in high school. He was a rare seven-footer in the 1960s and won three championships in the New York City League. It wasn't even fair. At one point he won 71 games in a row. So he gets recruited by UCLA and he's so dominant that the NCAA makes a huge change to the rules. They ban dunking. The rule is still referred to as the Lou Alcindor rule but this forced him to shoot more hooks and really develop his touch. Eventually they took the rule back but he still won three championships in college and was two-time national player of the year. He got even better in the NBA and got awards like six-time MVP, six-time champion, two-time final MVP, and 19-time all-star. He's most known for being the NBA's all-time leading scorer. And that's with only one made three-pointer, by the way, in his whole 20-year NBA career. He's third all-time in rebounds and third all-time in blocks. But that's really skewed because the NBA didn't even count blocks for the first three years of his career. If it wasn't for that, he might have the most blocks all time as well. His signature hook shot was called the sky hook because he was seven foot two with a seven foot five wingspan. And he just rose up over everyone off one leg and flicked that thing in the bucket. So yes, he was really tall, but that's not why it works. Here you see Manute Bull can't even do anything about it. And Bull was five inches taller. Even if he was eight foot tall, it wouldn't make a difference as long as Kareem, one, makes contact so he can start the move before Bull can jump to contest, and two, turns his shoulders perpendicular to Bull's shoulders. We only know of the skyhook being blocked four times out of over 50,000 attempts. And the only reason it ever happened was because he didn't make contact or get his shoulders perpendicular when going up against guys like Wilt Chamberlain or Ralph Sampson and they timed their jump perfectly. So the way I find out about this stuff and get started is I go to a basketball camp when I was about 13. If you don't know or haven't been to one, most of the time basketball camps are just a money grab. A lot of the time they just split you up based on age or height and keep you busy till your parents come get you. Even at that age, I was already like 6'2 at the time. So I get put with the post players, which I hated, but thank goodness that's what happened. One of the post coaches started telling us about Kareem and the skyhook. He said there's been one man with one move that nobody could guard and he just dominated everybody. And we're all young and we're thinking like Michael Jordan fade away maybe or we didn't know. He says no, it's Kareem and the Skyhook and none of us even heard of that but he's the all-time leading scorer. We're like more points than Michael Jordan, more points than LeBron James. He's like way more. He says if that's the best move ever, why doesn't everybody learn it? And I'm thinking like yeah, if there was one move that was so good and you could just score on anyone whatever you wanted, wouldn't everyone do it all the time? But no, there was no answer. There's absolutely no reason why everybody doesn't shoot hook shots anymore. You rarely see it at any level and it just kind of died out gradually as post play in general died out gradually and everybody just competes to be the tallest point guard. Maybe there are some people who think it's too old school or corny, just like most people think of the underhanded granny shot free throws. But if I thought I could shoot a higher percentage on free throws with the underhand granny shot, I would do it in a heartbeat. I thought that's crazy. If I could score on somebody whenever I wanted, I don't care if someone somewhere thinks it's corny. It looks to me like a huge opportunity because I'm slow and unathletic and I don't have anything going for me. So any opportunity I find that players are passing up for the sake of laziness or coolness or whatever, I'm gonna jump on that. And hopefully I'll just get a slight edge on trying to make my freshman basketball team or whatever I was worried about at the time. So I research it on my own and find out that Kareem learned it as an extension of the mic and drill. So I do the same thing. I have to show you on a little hoop outside my house just because we're in lockdown still. But if the regular mic in is just strictly layups, I start turning my wrist sideways to flip in little hooks, some with backboard, some without. After that was comfortable, I started working it further and further out. I thought about all the same things I would with a jump shot, trying to have good backspin, arc, follow through, etc. I shot them off one leg, I shot them off two legs, always working each hand evenly. Once I developed my touch and these little baby hooks felt automatic, I got more and more comfortable, I started shooting it off the dribble, like pretending I was backing people down or spinning off them and take hooks that way. These are all really considered jump hooks, not sky hooks. 
But once those were comfortable, I started doing what I thought were some awkward beginner variations of the skyhook. All variations are good to work on. So for the first few years of high school, I'm working on this and by senior year, I have it down. I was completely ambidextrous, 12 foot and in. There was nothing anybody could do about it. I still miss shots, but it was only because of my own inaccuracy. It wasn't about anything related to the defense. I shot around 63% from the field as a senior with no dunks, partly because if I got the ball anywhere in the mid range, I could just bump somebody off balance, turn my shoulders and throw a hook. This is also going on at the same time that I'm learning to shoot jump shots and start attempting three pointers in games for the first time. If I didn't miss a bunch of those, my field goal percentage would have been in the 70s. I didn't even appreciate it at the time, but these numbers are crazy. A team that shoots 50% is really hard to beat. So if you're a coach and you have a player that's scoring more efficiently than that, you get them to score as much as possible until the volume is high enough that it makes the percentages come down. And if you're the opposing coach, you do anything you can to force them into bad shots or limit the amount of shots they take. So I'm getting the ball most every time down the floor, but I'm also getting double and triple teamed anytime I get a catch inside the perimeter. Thankfully, I had amazing teammates that knew the game and we used that to our advantage, playing a lot of five on four with open shots and open cuts to the basket. This is the kind of inside out basketball that the old guys love and I was not at all a good passer, but because I could shoot hook shots, I led our team in assists, just passing out of the double team to the open player. Success breeds success and confidence breeds confidence. And even though I'm a 6'4 center going up against 6'8s and 6'9s, you couldn't tell me I wasn't the biggest player on the court just because I was so aggressive and happy to play bully ball. And it didn't matter how tall they were if I could get into their body and throw hooks. The sad part of the story is that this style of play got me some college football interest but any college basketball assistant coach or recruiter would think that whatever's going on there is interesting, but I've got X amount of scholarship dollars for a center. So I'm shopping for the biggest, meanest, most athletic guy I can find to finish lob plays. Then I'll teach him how to shoot hooks, but I can't teach Grant how to be a 6'10 beast. If he brought me back to his head coach, he probably would have been fired no matter what I had going on statistically. This is where I have to warn you that I use this shot as a crutch. I got so good at it because I always used it to compensate for being undersized. And I I really didn't develop any other useful skills until it was too late. I still found my way onto a college team, but it was a close call. In high school, any chance I got to play one-on-one -on -one or whatever, I should have been working on my weaknesses, but I was just so competitive that I thought I needed to win every game and back everybody down, every possession, and throw up a hook every time. If you have something that you're really good at, even if it's not a hook shot, don't use it like that as a crutch. That's probably the worst thing you could do. I really started developing the rest of my game at the Juco level, but I still use the hook shot as my go-to move anytime I got in the paint. Now overseas, I still use it, but I play more on the perimeter, so it makes up an even smaller percentage of the shots that I take. Now that we've clearly established that I am the CEO of hook shots, I've gotta tell you that I script these, if you can't tell, and I feel so cringy even writing them because I can't stand the thought of somebody thinking that I'm full of myself or something like that. If it seems like I'm bragging in these videos, talking about whatever kind of basketball success I've had, it's really not that. I just wanna tell you truthfully how well some things have worked for me so they can work even better for you. And hopefully I'm just as transparent about the mistakes so you don't run into the same problems that I have. That's everything about hook shots. DM me on Instagram if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. Check out the other Smart Heart Basketball videos to keep getting better. I'll see you in the next one.